Eric Ten Hag and, and Manchester United, bear in mind, they have not won a league game since March 9th. Now, they did get past Coventry City up 3 0. They get by, they lose the last 20 minutes. They give up three goals. They end up winning in pens. They move on and rematch City uh, in May 25th for the FA Cup final from last year, which they obviously lost. But here are his comments uh, in the post game. I say after that game had taken place, him hitting back at the media. Take a listen. The reaction to Sunday is almost as though you you lost the game rather than actually got to the FA Cup final. Can you can you understand that given how the game went? No, absolutely not. And you made it off, eh? and one was made the question: Is it embarrassing? Now the reactions from you was embarrassed. Why do you say that? Why well, it is the comments eh? in football? Top football is about results and we made it to the final and we deserved it not only by this game and but also the also the other games and yeah we lost and then in 20 minutes control also had a bad look 3-2 three, 3-3 two, three, three. we had we were very lucky in the end clear with penalties was very good and yeah, we made it to the final and that is <coughs> achievement. and twice in two years is magnificent for me as a manager, four cup finals in four years. And so the comments are a disgrace. The end of that is telling. <laughs> he made it a little bit about himself there. I, I've been to four straight cup finals, of course, coming from uh, from the Eredivisie. Uh, Stevie, your reaction to, to that sound? He's on an island, isn't he? He's the only yeah. person that thinks, thinks <laughs> the way he's thinking. I mean, you could hear the journalist going, Basically going, really? You really think that? I mean, it, it, it's akin to an, a U18 side beating a U14 team 3-2. That's embarrassing. That's what this is. We're talking about Coventry here, who are halfway down the league below you, who whose budget doesn't, doesn't reach one of your players. Never mind the whole team. And then you're going to then you're going to try and pat yourself on the back when you've been outplayed again. I mean, the fact that, that people are calling this an embarrassment isn't just about that one game. Because we all know what cup ties can... Cup, strange things happen in cup football, particularly the FA Cup. And we all get that. The problem is, Manchester United have been doing what they did in this game all season long. And it's just another, another game where they've completely messed up. And that's why everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. That, 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 this is what it's all about. It's about the whole season. And you've done it again. And somehow you've gotten away with it. I mean, he's just scratching around. I mean, even his players after the game pretty much said, I don't know how we managed this. We were lucky. They were better than us. We played like a bunch of kids. That's what Harry Maguire said. We played like a bunch of kids. But he's trying to put this off as some fantastic achievement. When basically you've beaten you've beaten a U14 team. I mean, come on. He's he he's as I said, he's on an island. He's the only person on the planet that is trying to give him and the team some credit for this performance. And let me. I think he's cracking under the pressure, and I think that he's in a way fighting for his job. And I think that everything that is coming out of his mouth right now is trying to defend both his. And his team, and I agree with Stevie, like, you know, there's nothing to celebrate when you beat a Coventry City team that it was only a few years ago they were in League Two and then, you know, a game away from uh, an FA Cup fi uh, final and, of course, you know, the things that they're doing in the championship. So it's, it's amazing that they got that far. So there's nothing. And then, obviously, the Anthony thing that happened over celebrating didn't help things. So... I, I know you can just see it. You can just see it in his eyes that Eric Ten Hag is cracking under the pressure. The questions keep coming. The pressure keeps going. And a very small part of me, Dallin and Stevie, feels for him because a very small part, not a massive part, but a very small <laughs> part feels for him because he did enter an absolute circus. And, you know, per statistics, he does have the most winningest percentage, including... Sir Alex Ferguson, out of any Manchester United manager right now. And he does have a trophy. And he is correct. He has gotten them to a final. However, however, for the money that Manchester United has spent, for the squad that they are, 
it's absolutely un, it's just not you can't defend the fact that Manchester United are once again going to be looking at a position in the league table where you know in terms of how much they have spent and what they are historically is almost to the point of embarrassing right so it's kind of like a 50 50 or maybe a 70 30 where the 30 i feel for him but there's no excuses and here's my final point by the way i i think that there's a lot of individual issues that he has had with players over the course of the season that worry me alejandro garnacho reportedly was not happy with him in in the recent matches specifically and how he managed his minutes obviously we know about the jade and sancho situation uh, early on when he had to deal with the Cristiano Ronaldo situation. He had some problems as well with Anthony. So there, there are a few man management issues that I keep seeing from Eric Ten Hag, which is usually apparently he treats his training sessions so regimentally that that can be an issue for Manchester United. So, you know, I feel for him this much, but Stevie's right. Like, th there's nothing to defend when you celebrate that well against a Coventry City team when you really shouldn't have won that game, right? It was poetic injustice that you did it you're manchester united like you should be looking and aiming for much higher so those answers those replies and the pressers they're absolutely him showing evidence of cracking under the pressure now you mentioned the league table where they sit right now seventh now they're tied on points with, with newcastle but they're 18 goals behind them in terms of goal difference so they're out of europe currently as, as europe is currently constituted as whatever but let me let me ask you this with the sympathetic empathetic lme that you are right now is is he is he going to be the guy that they're going to stick with in the summer? I mean, obviously this team's got this organization is going through transition. Is he the guy that's going to maintain this job? As he, as you mentioned, is kind of pleading for his case in the media at times. It depends on a lot of things. Now, had you asked me this like a month ago, I would have been like, he's done, he's gone. Mm -hmm. But everything that I'm reading and I'm seeing, specifically from our very own Mark Ogden, at this very moment, they are planning the summer and the preseason with Eric Ten Hag. Now, at this very moment. Obviously, in this industry, in this game of ours, that can change overnight. But it depends on a few things. Number one, if they win the FA Cup, which is not realistic, Man City are the favorites. But if they win it, they get a Europa League spot. Is that enough for Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos to say, OK, at least we have something. We have a trophy. Let's build on this. Also, uh, Dan Ashworth, if he leaves Newcastle and eventually joins Manchester United as sporting director, you know, with uh, Jason Wilcox, you know, does that become a strong relationship for him? Because obviously, once Dan Ashworth comes in, who's very good friends with Gareth Southgate, will he be a favorite? So there's a lot of components there. Now, let's see. The, here's the other problem I have. Let's say Eric Ten Hag is gone, right? He leaves. Bye-bye, Eric Ten Hag. Let's look at the candidates, because there's a lot of big clubs, big, big clubs, who are also looking at managers, who have probably a better financial stable situation. Not talking about Barcelona, but others, right? Like, who is available... If not Eric Ten Hag, Roberto De Servi, I mean, clearly he's done wonderful things with Brighton, but is his temperament, his character going to mix well with Manchester United? Um, how about Gareth Southgate, who I just mentioned? Well, he hasn't managed a club since 2009. And when you have an England squad like that, I mean, the semifinals or a final is the least I expect of you. I'm sorry. So what's going to happen when you manage a club? So that's the other one I think of. Sedan is not taking this. So, like, who is replacing Eric Ten Hag? And are they fundamentally better than Eric Ten Hag? So is it better for you to stick with him with new ownership or at least new management under Sir Jim Ratcliffe and say, all right, Eric Ten Hag, here's what we want to do. Let's go for it. But a lot, there's a lot of things that depend on this situation. I mean, but a month ago, I would have said to you, no, he's gone. But at this very moment, per our Mark Ogden, he's, he, Man United are planning this summer with Eric Ten Hag. Stevie, uh, a similar question, but I guess a little bit of a different bent on it. Is he the right guy? and with new organizational leadership to lead them back to where they're expected to be, which is not beating Coventry City in a semifinal for the FA Cup. It's competing for the for, for, for the title, for the Premier League title, and competing to win the Champions League. Is he the right guy to do that? So the question is, why do you keep him? Crickets? Yeah. Why do you keep him? I thought it was rhetorical. There's not a reason. <laughs> 